Good afternoon. We'll now start. So first of all, I'd like to welcome everybody to this prep talk this afternoon. Please mute yourself, but always show your video picture. Sign in your name, your Facebook account, or email address in the chat box. Please include the names of your companions attending with you. Use the chat box to ask questions and make comments while the pep talk is on. There will be a, there will be group pictures at the start and at the end of the pep talk. As a reminder, please take the online learning cum evaluation test exercise for mastery of learning and have a perfect score to get a certificate like this, this the one shown below here. The link, I already placed the link in the chat box. Another reminder, 50 or letter certificates will entitle one to a voucher of uh, our office on telemedical consultation. We are now on our 57 or 58, uh, 50, eight uh, pep talk already. Another request, those who are not planning to take the Olete, where I ask for a feedback, please type in your feedback in the chat box before, during the offer, open forum and before we close the session. So let's now have a group picture taking before we start the pep talk proper. Okay, ready? Everybody ready? One, two, three. Okay. I have a, a patient empowerment program in which I like to empower the lay people or patients to take control in the management of their health. There are three courses in the pep talk. I completed the core course on October 9, 2021. From October 23, 2021 onwards, I've been tackling health disorder and health issue courses. This may take three years or longer. My pep talk today is entitled Thyroid Test Results, Thyroid Test Results, Reading and Interpretation. This is part of the health issue course. The empowerment objective is for the lay people to have an understanding of the importance of reading and interpreting thyroid test results in their health management. The uh, contents of today's pep talk will be the following. General recommendations on reading and interpreting lab, lab tests with numeric values and narrative descriptions and conclusions. How I read and interpret thyroid test results. Idiosyncrasies of the radiologist in reading and writing thyroid ultrasound results. Examples of challenges. And then my advice in reading and interpreting thyroid function tests and thyroid ultrasound. Thyroid function tests and ultrasound of the thyroid are commonly done as laboratory diagnostic tests for patients with possible thyroid disorders. A lot of Filipino patients have this test done for one reason or another, usually resulting from a screening fad or ordered by physicians who are considered to be ritualistic and maximalist. Then they ask me, when they say they, a lot of these Filipino patients ask me to read and interpret the results. I have to divulge that I am a minimalist physician. I don't subscribe to the screening fad of lay people, as well as physicians who are usually ritualistic and maximalist, and who outrightly want to please their patients with their desire for screening laboratory tests, even without valid indications. 
I do laboratory tests only when indicated. Examples will be patients with symptoms and signs, which I am not very definite of with, the, with my diagnosis, that I need some help from laboratory tests. Patients, another example will be patients without symptoms and signs, but with a high risk for a particular disease. So that's another indication for the lab test that I usually do. In my practice, I cannot avoid or refuse patients coming to me for interpretation of the results of their lab tests requested by themselves or other physicians. And because of the prevalence of these events, I have decided to write something about them, particularly to advise the lay people on how to read and interpret the results of lab tests. For today, I will focus on thyroid. Last week, we, we tackled breast, breast uh, ultrasound and mammography. I like to empower the patients to know the principles and processes and caveats of reading and interpreting lab results so that along the way, hopefully, I can convince them to have lab tests done only when indicated, kung kailangan lang. Before I go to the thyroid test, allow me to give you some important relevant introductions. So the topic here is thyroid lab tests concerning the thyroid. So the thyroid gland, as a review, is a butterfly-shaped organ located in the base and central neck of the neck as illustrated in this picture. The thyroid gland is a vital organ. When you say vital organ, it's one that is needed to survive, that regulates metabolism, growth, and development of the human body. The thyroid gland makes, releases, and controls thyroid hormones, hormones that control metabolism. Metabolism is a process where the food is taken into the body and then transformed into energy. So this energy is used throughout the entire body to keep many of our body's systems working correctly. If there is an abnormality in the thyroid gland, the commonly used term is goiter. Thus, there is a goiter when there is an abnormality in the thyroid gland. The abnormality can be in both structure and function both singly or in combination. So there could be abnormality in function, and which, which is usually uh, represented by hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism. If, it's, uh, if the thyroid function is normal, we call it euthyroidism. Euthyroidism. Abnormality in structure is another abnormality that, you can, that can be seen in the thyroid. No? The form, the, uh, it's usually present as either enlargement or nodule or mass formation. So once you have an enlargement or there's a mass, we call that abnormality in the structure. So the other situation is that you can have a combination of abnormality in both structure and functions. The usual thyroid function tests being done nowadays, especially in the Philippines, are the FT3, which stands for free triiodotyronine, FT4, free tyroxine, and TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormones. The uh, thyroid function tests are diagnostic tests for thyroid function. It can determine whether you are in the euthyroid, meaning normal function, thyroid function, or you have a overfunctioning thyroid gland producing hyperthyroidism or underperformance of a thyroid gland, which is called hypothyroid. Pulang naman, hypo. Okay. The usual interpretations of thyroid function tests are the following. Okay. Normal is the, uh, when you, you, the diagnosis will be a normal thyroid function if the uh, if you have normal FT3, normal FT4, and normal normal TSH. Okay, so as I said, the uh, term here is euthyroidism. If all these three are normal, then you are euthyroid. Okay, now if there are the T3 
and T4 are elevated and then there is depression of the TSH, then you have hyperthyroidism. Okay, notice the uh, baligtad dito, na elevated and then depressed. It's, okay, take note of that uh, uh, findings that can lead to the interpretation of hyperthyroid. Sa hypothyroid naman, mababa ang T4 and T3, pero mataas yung TSH. Okay? TSH is the one stimulating the thyroid. Kaya kung mababa ang, uh, ang thyroid hormones being produced by the thyroid gland, there's a automatic regulatory system in which tataas ang uh, secretions ng TSH para to compensate, trying to compensate para dagdagan itong FT3 and FT4. Okay? So there are, when I say normal, elevated, depressed, there are references, reference ranges, meaning normal values for the different types of thyroid function tests. I will not uh, put the normal values here because if yung mga normal values vary from one laboratory to another, okay? Then these reference ranges have numeric values. May mga numbers yan, hindi siya description, okay? So here I have placed down a note. This must be correlated clinically, okay? meaning you have to check the symptoms and signs to be able to finally conclude whether it is really normal, hyperthyroid, or hypothyroid. But initially, you can look at the results, okay? But to validate whether it's really hyperthyroid, hypo, or euthyroid, you must take a look at the patient's symptoms and signs. So if there are incongruencies, when you try to correlate the symptoms and signs with the values, with the uh, thyroid function test values, if there are incongruencies, may mga, may mga contradictions and may doubts, then a clinician would just have to repeat the test. <clears throat> Another situation that uh, are commonly seen will be, ito, normal, pa rin, normal lahat, normal, so normal, thyroid function test now and then if if the patient does not manifest symptoms of hyper or hypothyroidism tatanggapin na lang natin ito as the as the result okay but there are instances in which uh, there is the ft3 ft4 are normal pero yung tsh depressed okay in this particular instances, instance, most of most doctors, most clinicians will label this as hyperthyroid, okay? Because they put more importance on the TSH, na? okay? Now, in another situation, normal FT4, FT, FT4 and FT3, but elevated TSH. As I said, most of the clinicians put a lot of importance on the TSH, so if it's elevated, it's still hypothyroidism, okay? But again, a caveat here would be the, uh, these laboratory results may be wrong, okay? And then, so you have to correlate it with the clinical findings in terms of symptoms and signs of the patients. So if there is really uh, symptoms of hyperthyroidism and then depressant TSH, natanggapin natin yung, yung results, okay? If the patient manifests with uh, signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism and elevated and TSH, then we we uh, accept the results. Okay. Pero kung wala siyang signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism or signs and symptoms of hyperthyroidism, if these are the results, then it might produce some doubt. Then one option is to repeat the test. Okay. So. Challenges in the interpretation of thyroid function tests. I will cite you a particular patient. Okay, but 66 year old female had thyroid function tests done as a screening. S screening. As I said, I don't usually order these things unless it's really indicated. So it was ordered by somebody else. There were no symptoms of hyperthyroidism or hypothyroidism. So she got these results. Okay. FT3, okay, 2.54, so it's below the range, 2.73 ang low, uh, lower limit, no? pero sa kanya, 2.54, mas mababa, so low. Then FT4, normal siya, di ba? Normal, okay? 
but the TSH is high. Okay, 7.01. Ang upper limit nito is 3.75. Okay. So, medyo because of my uh, vigilance against laboratory errors, no? so I asked for a repeat. So, pinarepeat ko ito. So, about uh, one week, two weeks after, okay, the repeat thyroid function test showed everything to be normal, okay? okay. Normal FT4, FT3, and normal TSH, okay? So, the challenges here, the dilemma, okay, but this work was caught by a uh, clinicians, okay? If there were no repeat tests, patient would have been treated unnecessarily, unnecessarily with medications, which can be lifetime. Okay, in this particular case, mababa ang T3 niya, mataas yung TSH, so hypothyroid ang interpretation ng ibang doctor. So she might be treated with hypo with uh, as hypo, hypothyroid and given medication for life. Okay, so she will have if she, if if no repeat test was were done. Okay, she will have an unwanted lifetime anxiety of thinking I have a thyroid disease. Forever, my ingrain sa utak niya, no? Okay. Although she may have some, sometimes they can have a cascade of other unnecessary tests. At all, we don't have any choice but to repeat just the test. Okay. So sometimes some doctors would go for ultrasound and then biopsy that may be need, that may be needed to, to do further investigations. Okay, that that is what is meant by cascades of other unnecessary tests. Okay, fortunately for her, a repeat test has prevented these errors and also a possible negative consequences. Another type of error, kanina hypothyroidism, pwede ding kabaligtaran hyperthyroidism so the error in interpretation of hyperthyroidism based on a decrease decrease naman yung TSH without symptoms okay and then if you repeat it sometimes you repeat it it will turn out to be normal so let's say the repeat test showed normal results so so if not rechecked patient could have been treated erroneously for hyper hyperthyroidism again usually lifetime yan. and then the uh, diagnosis of Hyperthyroidism will be ingrained into the mind of the patient that he has a thyroid disease. Yun pala normal. So let's now go to the ultrasound of the thyroid. Okay. So ultrasound of the thyroid, yung thyroid function test, mga numeric values yun, na? mga numbers. But for the thyroid ultrasound, this contain narrative description by the, uh, by the uh, ultrasonographer or radiologist. Okay. And then also some conclusions. Okay, so so it's an ultrasound of the thyroid. No, as I said, ultrasound of the thyroid is a diagnostic test for structure, whether it's enlarged or there are nodules. And if there are nodules, is it benign? Is it not cancer or is it cancer? Okay, so what one one can see in the uh, possible uh, scenarios on the ultrasound findings, ultrasound of the thyroid will be enlargement. Malaki lang yung thyroid gland. Okay, both lobes, okay, pero walang bukol. That's one scenario. Another scenario, enlargement, malaki, pero may kasamang bukol. And then, another scenario is mga bukol-bukol, marami o isa, okay, how many, location, right, left, ismos, etc. And then, usually, they measure the size and then the nature, whether it's cystic or solid or complex. Cystic means it contains fluid, solid, no fluid. Complex means a combination of fluid and solid element. And then border, border of the, of the nodules, whether it's distinct or indistinct. And then so a, lot, a lot of times the ultrasonographer also give the ratio between the, the, whether the tallness and the, and the uh, wideness of the, of the mass. Okay? And then they also describe whether there are calcifications or not. Okay? And then the other finding that you can uh, see that you can discern in the ultrasound will be whether there is or there is none, okay, enlarged thyroid neck nodes, okay. These are also important in the diagnosis. 
Ito yung mga usual conclusions nowadays okay, that are being done by radiologists. They're starting to, uh, to uh, we're starting to have a lot of this already. Okay. Last time we talked about tyrads, subrest, by, B. This time it's tyrads, T. T stands for thyroid. Thyroid imaging, reporting, and data system. But this thyroid, when they report thyroid, it's only for nodules. Okay. The mga nodules ang nakikita doon sa ultrasound. Okay. And then on the basis of these thyroids, no, it will determine whether there's an indication to do needle biopsy. Needle biopsy. Okay. So the thyroids is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Doon sa birads, may zero. Pero dito, walang zero. Na? Okay. So, pag tyrides one, it means negative or based on ultrasound findings, normal ang thyroid. Pyrides two, benign. Okay. So, may benign features. Okay. So, example of benign features, walang uh, may, may cystic component, something like that. And also, the, the nodules are well-defined. Okay. Um, Thyroid 3, probably benign, without suspicious features, probably. Okay, so hindi siya 100% pa rin, probably. Then 4A, 4B, 4C, low, intermediate, and moderate. Okay, and then high suspicion, thyroid 5. Okay, so you can see here, pag may one suspicion feature, they call it low suspicion. If there are two suspicious features, then two. Uh, 4B. Intermediate, three or four suspicious uh, features, four C. So five high suspicion. Okay, so you can see, medyo may konting subjectivity dito, but there's a basis. But uh, kumisa na kakalito rin, no? So one, two, three, or four or five. Okay, and ang basis for saying tyrants four A, B, C, and five. So. Here is another classification that they use. Okay. They give points, zero points, one point, two points, get on. And then they, uh, they add the uh, points together, no? mga features of uh, uh, ito, whether cystic or solid, high, high kumaraming echoes or not, and then taller than wide, and then border, whether ill-defined or well-defined, and then kung, uh, echogenic focus, kung may mga Posay calcifications, then they use points. Okay, yeah, add, add mo lang yung mga points to come out to the conclusion whether it's benign, not suspicious, mildly suspicious, moderate suspicious, highly suspicious. And here they have recommendation: no needle biopsy is needed for benign, no needle biopsy for T uh, thyroids two. Okay, eto starting with mildly suspicious three, four, five. Okay, kailangan na ng recommendation is to do a needle biopsy. Okay. So, now I like to come to show you a uh, method that I use to diagnose thyroid disorder without the use of ultrasound and thyroid function test. Okay, so when I, when I uh, see uh, there's a large thyroid gland on palpation okay without symptoms of hypothyroidism and hypothyroidism i give out the diagnosis of diffuse colloid adenomatous goiter and then if there's an enlarged thyroid with symptoms of hyperthyroidism like uh, sudden weight loss palpitations increased heart rate and then bulging eyeballs no i give a diagnosis of hyperthyroidism if there's an enlarged thyroid gland with symptoms of hypothyroidism like uh, edema, slow movement, then I call I make a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. But again, all of this should be correlated with the clinical findings. Okay? So here I'd like to share with you my experience with the clinical diagnosis without the use of thyroid ultrasound and thyroid function tests. I like to uh, tell you honestly, modesty aside, my batting average is more than 90% accurate, just based on this uh, algorithm. Now, with multiple thyroid nodules, marami more than one, but with no signs of malignancy, 
then my diagnosis would be multiple colloid adenomatous goiter. I will tell you later on what are the clinic, clinical signs of malignancy here. Now, if it's cystic complex, I call it colloid cysts, colloid adenomatous nodules. I mean, it's solitary or multiple nodules, but with signs of malignancy, then it come out with a diagnosis of thyroid cancer. Okay. Now, the clinical signs that I use to, to uh, get a clue on the of malignant tumor of the cancer would be the following. It's hard. The nodule, if the nodule is hard, but it's not due to the calcification. Mga calcification kasi yung mga carb calcium deposits yan, kamisan, matigas yun. Yung mga, especially with those with long-standing thyroid uh, goiter, matigas, matigas talaga yun. No? So, but if it's not due to the calcification, it, if it's talagang matigas, then I suspect cancer. Then with signs of invasion, yung mga, yung uh, nag-encroach sa surrounding tissues, causing fixation, hindi siya gumagalaw na, and then kumisan, na-enclose dun sa nerve, causing hoarseness of voice. So if you have fixation and hoarseness of voice, that's a sign of, that those are signs of malignancy. And then if there are signs of spread to the neck nodes and as well as to the distant mass, let's say to the bone, to the lungs, then I suspect malignancy. So these are the clinical signs of malignancy that I use. No? So if there are solitary nodules with signs of malignancy, I suspect thyroid cancer already. Okay. So my options here will be either needle biopsy first or outright operation. If I'm 99, more than 90% or 99% certain based on the clinical grounds that it's cancer, I operate already right away. Now, if there's if the degree of certainty is on below 90, I can do needle biopsy first. Okay. So the challenges in the uh, tyrants, okay, there are a lot of overreading, okay, overreading, leading to a lot of needle biopsy. So that's the uh, downside of this new development. Okay. So illustration one on the tyrants again, 66 year old female in 2016. My clinical diagnosis was multiple colloid adenomatous goiter. My basis was that there were multiple nodules, but with no signs of malignancy. So I have been following her up for six years with the same diagnosis and with no biopsy, just uh, checkup, checkup, okay, monitoring. But one day in 2022, she went for an ultrasound on her own. The reading was tyrants 5 for one nodule. Okay. There were several nodules, but one nodule was read as tyrants 5. And then without consulting me, she had herself biopsied and then it showed adenomatous nodule. So, so I told her I was right after all, okay? Because in 2016, my diagnosis was colloid adenomatous goiter. So this was the, the uh, picture of the uh, results of the ultrasound. So you can see here, right thyroid lobe mass, thyroid five, okay? The, uh, the finding was that if, if it compared to the 2017, there was no significant change in size, but just the same, it was read as thyroid 5. And then the recommendation of the ultrasonographer is that a biopsy is recommended. Okay. So here, a tiny cyst, it's a benign one, no cervical lymphadenopathy, no lymph nodes. Okay. So these are, okay. Several nodules, okay? One nodule was uh, selected and then read as thyroid spine. So this caused anxiety on the patient and then she had herself biopsied. Okay. Okay. So another patient, okay? So you can see here, multiple nodules and dami, na? Okay. So a combination of thyroid three. Bawat nodule, binabasaan nila ng thyroid, na? Okay. So eto hindi siya nabasaan ng... Thyroids, but spongiform, when you have spongiform nodules, parang cystic na rin yan, so it's, it's benign, okay? And then this one, complex, predominantly solid nodules, kaya thyroid 3, complex, as I said, cystic, complex, uh, okay? Usually benign siya, no? And then, at a well-defined border, pero 
binasahan siya ng tyrant spore. Okay? Because of the increase in size. No? 2.1, previously 2. Point, uh, andale, 1 point well-defined border. Okay. 2.7, 1.6. Previously, mas maliit. Ewan ko kung bakit siya nabasa ng tyrant spore. Okay. Okay. Well defined naman in margin, no? Okay, baka itong internal echo, okay? And then this one, another nodule na basahan with, with increase in size and then wider than tall dapat binay nito, tyrant spore basa nito. Tyrant spore, tyrant spore, okay? So the other the rest of the nodules are cystic to complex, kaya tyrant sa uh, 2. Okay, or tyrant stream. Okay, so on the left lobe, ganun din. Maraming nodules. So, isa, isa, isa nila, tyrants 2, tyrants 3, and on. No? Okay, so ang conclusion nila is that normal size and multinodular thyroid gland with small vascularity, so a slight increase in the size of a few nodules may encounter increase. Okay, kaya this, this one is an incomplete report. No? Kaya wala silang binanggit dun sa tyrants 4 and 5. We say when, they, when, they pour, uh, when they put the uh, notation of tyrants 4 and tyrants 4, tyrants 4, okay, uh, kung may 5 pa rin, so needle biopsy is usually recommended. Pero ito walang sinabi. No? Okay, but in the report, it's mentioned there, tyrants 4, kaya nakakatakot na rin yun. No? Another patient, okay, ito, multiple nodules, Okay, bawat nodules meron, no? So description, tyrant spore, nakakatakot. Okay, tyrant spore, another nodule. Tyrant 3, tyrant spore, tyrant 5. So a combination of 3, 4, 5, ang dami, no? And then here on the left lobe, may tyrant spore, then tyrant 5. Okay, so pinapa biopsy to, okay? So biopsy, the, the biopsy was done on two nodules, A and B, right and left, okay? And then it's, it's ang lumabas, mo, more, most likely it's a uh, adenoma, benign pa rin, no? Benign pa rin. So when she came, to, when he came to me, I suggested na uh, you just observe, no? Okay, no need for an operation. No? <clears throat> My recommendations and advice in reading and interpreting ultrasound thyroid results. Okay. Number one, Remember that the results or diagnosis of the ultrasound given to you by the radiologist are not final. Okay. Are not final until seen by a thyroid specialist clinician. Thyroid specialist clinician. In somebody whom you trust, whom you know how to, uh, who know how to interpret the results. And then based also correlating your clinical findings. And then in the thyroid, in the reports issued by the radiologist, there is usually a caveat or a statement to the patient receiving the reports, correlate clinically, or specifically the statement runs like this, this result is best interpreted by your attending physician in correlation with your clinical data, imaging, and laboratory results. I agree with this statement, pero dapat gawin, na? Okay, because a lot of times the clinician usually just follow the readings of the radiologist. Okay, so when you say clinical correlation, it just means that you gather all the other available medical data and information, such as the age, the sex, symptoms and signs, and other laboratory tests done to a particular test. Here we're talking about thyroid function tests and also the ultrasound, okay? To determine their reciprocal relationship and to establish an orderly connection through comparing, ko comparing mo yung mga data and contrasting them with the goal of coming out with a decision whether the patient has a, a particular diagnosis which is could be benign or malignant or what, okay? So the goal is to come out with a clinical diagnosis that is as accurate as possible, not just based on the ultrasound results, but in combination with the other tests and other data. My other recommendations will be, you can take a look and read the contents if you want, 
Kung natatakot ka, huwag na lang. Okay? However, as a lay person, chances are you will not understand and more so interpret the uh, narrative descriptions and conclusions of the certified reader. You will not be able to understand it. Okay? So have the narrative diagnostic reports read and interpreted by a trusted physician clinician or your attending physician and let him or her make a decision on the report. The reason why I said that you have to uh, mahirap na to interpret as a lay person because even for us physician clinicians, we have to interpret the words and phrases used by the certified readers kasi wala namang standard uh, statement yan. Eh, no? iba, maraming iba-ibang descriptions. And then we, a lot of times, we have to read between the lines. Okay? And in addition, we have to correlate the findings and conclusions of the readers with the symptoms and signs, okay? so which only doctors can do. Okay? Other tests and other circumstantial situations that a patient may have to make a decision whether one, everything is normal, a finding that is mere baka konting variation lang, no? normal pa rin yan, something abnormal that is being suspected, pwede, or there is really abnormality going on. So this is the decision that a clinician will have to do after correlating with the clinical findings. And at times, we have to check the accuracy of the reports. And we have to have discussion with the readers. Tama ba yung sinasabi ninyo? Baka mali. Bakit kulang yung report? Ganon, no? So, in the end, have the narrative reports, diagnostic reports, read and interpreted by a trusted physician clinicians. Okay? And then let her, him make a decision on the report. How I usually read and interpret the reports as a thyroid specialist, these are what I usually do. Number one, I read the reports and take note first of any red flags for cancer. Yan ang unang priority ko. Okay? So if there is a thyroid's conclusion, I take note of this first. If there are conclusions for possible cancer, like thyroid's four, five, or even three, okay, I then look at the narrative descriptions and study the basis for the radiologist making the conclusions. If the basis are the basis are valid, na, then I tentatively accept the conclusions after reading the report pa, ha? okay? Tentatively because I still have to examine the patient's neck. I still have to correlate the reports with the physical findings as well as other data and information, such as other tests that could have been done on the patient and also the other data on the history. If there are uncertainties or incongruencies in the basis and in the reports, I examine the patient, particularly the neck, the thyroid, then make a decision, essentially whether to repeat the ultrasound in another institution to be read by a, another reader. So that, this, is a decision, this is a decision that I have to make. If the reports do not contain any red flag for cancer, again, just the same, I do scrutinize the reports to check for any incongruencies. And then I also examine the neck to correlate with the reports of my clinical findings because there's such thing as false negative report on the ultrasound. So whatever be the report, whether there is a suspicion for cancer or not, I correlate clinically. I always examine the patient's neck Okay, which is a must for all thyroid specialists. There are some thyroid specialists who do not examine the neck. They just base it on the diagnostic report. Then I decide accordingly. Now, how radiologists read and write the reports, meaning what are the idiosyncrasies that they have? One, there are a lot of subjectivity in the radiologist's interpretation of the findings in the ultrasound. As a result, there are a lot of inter, inter means two, two people, inter observer variations, meaning given the same ultrasound plate in, mga, in, in film, two different readers will read and interpret them differently. So that's, that's the, uh, that's, that, that will lead, that's, that's the reason why I said there's a lot of subjectivity. Number two, idiosyncrasies, the thyroids is something recent in the Philippines. 
not all radiologists are adept in reporting tyrants. There is a lot of overreading based on my personal experience. Number three, radiologists commonly put recommendations after, after their conclusions, especially when there is thyroids 4, thyroids 5. Examples of recommendations are tissue biopsy, follow-up ultrasound every six months, every three months, etc. My recommendation is just to consider them as personal recommendation from the radiologists. We cannot stop them from giving their personal recommendations it's because it's a free country, democratic country. One does not have to follow them. Let your thyroid specialist decide on what to do next. The thyroid specialist may not also follow the recommendations of the radiologist. So remember their caveats when they, they put in the report, they ask the clinicians to correlate clinically. So that gives you the, uh, the clinicians the leeway not to follow the, rec the recommendations. So to emphasize, Again, personally, whatever be the report, I correlate clinically. My advice with this, on what to do with, with uh, the ultra, thyroid function test and ultrasound report, okay. I will tackle this with a summary and also take away lessons. Okay. So I have discussed all of these topics, general recommendations, okay, and then how to read interpret thyroid results each is increases of radiologists, examples of challenges, and then my advice in reading. So although the reports are written, written for healthcare professionals, not patients, there is a lot of, to learn that you can learn by just looking, studying, and learning from them, especially after this pep talk. Okay? So somehow, although it's not easy to understand all this, uh, this lecture, but somehow you'll get some idea and learn from it. So, but in the end, however, always have a trusted thyroid specialist clinician read and interpret the results for you. Learn how to palpate your own thyroid. I have taught you that before. Okay. Do regular thyroid self-examination. You may not need thyroid tests if you do regular thyroid examinations. And then do the diagnostic test only when indicated. Kung kailangan, kailangan lang. So the uh, indications are, are seen on the uh, right side of the slide. But before that, if you do diagnostic tests outside the indications, you will end up, you will, most of the time, you will end up with a lot of false positive alarming readings, which can cause undue anxiety, which may lead to other unnecessary tests like biopsy, which may lead to unnecessary operations and not to say more expenses. So the indications for doing a uh, diagnostic test in general will be you screen for a disease or exclude its presence in high-risk patients. And then you want to have a more definite diagnosis after clinical examination, okay? And then to determine the severity of the disease present and to project the outcome or prognosticate. And then lastly, to, to, uh, you can do the lab exams to monitor the progress of the disease or the treatment and the treatment. So at the end of the day, as I said, have a trusted thyroid specialist review and interpret and do a clinical correlate correlations. And after hearing the explanations and recommendations on what to do next by your attending physicians, feel free to ask questions. Always ask questions as needed for further clarifications. The decision on what to do next should be a shared one between you and your attending physicians and not just dictated by your attending physicians. And then if there's a need for a second opinion for another physician, so the conclusion and recommendations on what to do next, go ahead. You have the right to seek a second opinion. This is part of patient empowerment. Knowing the principles, the processes of reading and interpreting laboratory results, which I uh, discussed today, and their associated caveats, the mga warning signs, is also a part of patient empowerment. So a takeaway in relation to patient empowerment, be always in touch with reliable medical information on how physicians read and interpret thyroid function tests and thyroid ultrasound. Knowledge is power, it gives power, use the four case of patient empowerment, kaalaman, kakayanan, karapatan, Kapangyarihan, 
to gain greater control over decisions in medical management of oneself by having some idea, kahit na konti, some idea on how physicians read and interpret thyroid function tests and thyroid ultrasound. So with that, I end my prep talk. I hope I have empower you to have a better understanding of the importance of reading and interpreting thyroid test results in your health management. Before we go to the QA session, so remember, reminder, take the OLETE, also 50 OLETE certificates in Title I to a voucher. And then please write your comments for those who are not taking the, uh, even for those who are taking the OLETE, you can write down your feedback here on the chat box. Okay. So with that, uh, let's now have a, a group picture taking before we go to the question and answer sessions. Okay, ready? Get all set pictures. One, one, two, three. Oh, one, two, three. Okay. The floor is now open for questions, comments, suggestions, recommendations, and also consultations if you want. Now, I can say some. Oh, okay, go ahead, Susan. Yes, uh, Doc. Uh, first of all, uh, I should have attended this uh, session two decades ago. <laughs> you know why? Uh, I had a thyroid operation 1998 after consulting three doctors. And uh, what happened is that uh, the entire thyroid gland was removed huh? okay. because the I think the the doctor's findings uh, the uh, was um, papillary carcinoma. Okay. Uh, I I wasn't able to research earlier what papillary is all about, but anyway, uh, I I would I would presume that uh, the papillary is uh, cancer. It's a cancer. Yeah, I, papillary is a cancer, but papillary is part of uh, no of uh, the thyroid gland. Yeah. Papillary, okay. When you say papillary cancer, it's a type of thyroid cancer. Okay, so anyway, uh, I underwent uh, radiation, REI, R-A-I. and then since uh, then since then I've been see uh, I've been seeing uh, endocrinologist. Uh, the last was uh, a very busy endocrinologist from your hospital, so I left him after three years. Uh, now I'm seeing another endocrinologist. Okay, uh, my 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 concern and question, uh, I. I I, I go to a regular uh, doctor and every three months, every three months, I undergo uh, tests, uh, the immunology. I, I have a copy, you know. Mm -hmm. I undergo FT4 eclea. I don't know what eclea means and STSH eclea. After, after he, he saw the results, no, apparently there is a, a warning in the in the result of TSH, no, uh, it went uh, beyond the range. He gave me, uh, he uh, he he increased, he increased the uh, the tire, ano, the uh, nevotide. Ah, uh, he increased that from hundred milligrams to hundred twenty-five milligrams. No? So. Well, at least uh, I feel, I don't know, I feel I feel better. I will see him again in September. So uh, my concern is that I will go on, I will go on seeing him. I will go on uh, taking levothyroxine for life, right, Doc? Uh, the second one, the answer to the second one is yes. The first one I have to... Uh, I have to make a qualification. <laughs> okay. 
what I get to see him. Uh, what, what do you mean qualification? I cannot answer you directly to the point because your first question is whether you have to see him all for the rest of your life. Oh. <laughs> yes. because every time I see him, uh, he's now, of course, he is in a hospital here in Makati, no? Because every time I see him, of course, I have to, uh, I have to uh, show him the result of uh, whatever test he asked me to undergo, and these are different. These are diff uh, I should say, more than five tests, no? Not only the thyroid test, but the FBS, CBC, what else? Oh, of course, there are. So I usually, for the past three years, I've been seeing him, except except uh, during uh, during the pandemic. No, I've been seeing okay. him at least three times a year. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, I I will just leave that question later on. I uh, seeing your doctor on a permanent basis. Okay. Okay. So, number one, you have papillary thyroid cancer. Okay. Yeah. So that's a type of thyroid cancer now, which is uh, usually slow growing. Okay. It's, it's a good prognosis. So when were when was you operated? When were you operated? Nineteen ninety eight. Nineteen ninety eight. How many years now? For <laughs> more than two decades 24 years already okay yeah at yeah. what age at what age were you operated on mm, siguro may wala pa yata kung 50 okay oh. okay anyway as I said yung pap, remember papillary thyroid cancer is one of the four usual types of thyroid cancer okay you have the follicular medullary and anaplastic and papillary cancer is the best cancer to have if you have to have a thyroid cancer, okay? It's uh, at 24 years, most likely, uh, most likely, baka hindi na ukulit yon. okay? 24 yes. years, uh, okay? And then, uh, most likely, uh, I'm not saying 100%, huh? okay? And then, uh, total thyroidectomy, tama, pwede, okay? Especially if it involves the two lobes, one lobe or two lobes? Isang Siguro, lobe. I didn't ask anymore okay. that time. I was so okay. anxious. Oh, pwede na. And then, binigyan ka pa ng additional radioactive iodine therapy to reinforce it. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, at uh, 24 years after, no, so, wala kang recurrence. Okay, that's good. Congratulations. Number two, uh, pag tinanggal yung total uh, buong thyroid mo, you, you usually end up with hypothyroid kasi wala ka ng thyroid. Na? Okay? Wala ng thyroid gland to produce thyroid hormones. That's why you have to take your thyroid hormones for life. Okay? So, okay. tama yun, that you have to take it for life. Na? Yung dosage now will be dependent on how tinatitrate lang naman yan. Eh, na? Tinatitrate na kung uh, what is the minimum level of uh, minimum amount of thyroid hormones that you need to maintain you to a new thyroid. No? Okay. Mm -hmm. As I said kanina, some endocrinologists use the TSH as a as a rely as parang pinaka main basis for saying whether it's hyper or hypothyroid. No? Pero kung minsan, yung test na yung TSH yun, nagkakamali rin siya no? sa laboratory. No? Okay. So you just have to take note of that. No? Pero yun sa iyo, kung wala kang nararamdaman, probably 100, 124 years na, eh, no? Kung 100, one tablet, 100 microgram probably will do. That's my personal opinion, na huh? Okay? So, okay. then you don't have to take it every three months in test na yun, no? So, yung thyroid function test, you don't have to take it every three months, no? As long as you don't feel anything, you just maintain it, no? Kasi you, you okay. need it as a replacement, okay? As a minimum minimum uh, measure, you have to take it as a replacement kasi wala ka ng thyroid hormones, no? Okay? So whether you have to go back to the doctors, it's really up to you because as I said, there are uh, at least uh, may mga ritualistic, maximalist, and minimalist, <laughs> no? Okay? So there are some doctors who will give, give you a lot of tests, okay? Nice to have. No, but that but are not really needed. No? Okay. So, i, ibangga mo na lang yung personality mo with the doctor. If you're also a maximalist doctor, physician, uh, patients that you want everything, hindi baka vibes kayong dalawa. 
Because there are some patients who really want to know, despite the the explanations that I, as a minimalist, I usually explain things that these are not really needed. Pero kung minsan, um, you be convinced, no? Okay? No, I, I, ano nga, I just listen to what he says, eh. And then afterwards, he will, he will already write uh, the prescription and then uh, what are the, ano, what are the tests? I should show, uh, test results, I should show him three months after. Okay. So part of my patient empowerment program is that you have the kapangyarihan to ask, 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 ask. Okay? Ask questions. Okay? <laughs> do not do not just follow, no? Okay? okay. If you okay. just follow pagkatapos sabi ng doktor, eh gustong-gusto nitong pasyente, maraming tests. Ah. Sige, pagawa na natin para masaya siya. Naubos <laughs> na yung pera ko, dok. Kaya nga, you should have you should have conversation. Retire, retire pa naman, retired pa naman ako. <laughs> okay. Anyway, okay. so sige, thank you. So you make a decision whether you want to change to a minimalist or a maximal or stay the maximalist doctor. I okay. like that classification. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, Again. any more questions? Okay. Any more questions? Uh, do I see, where is it? Radies, any questions on the chat box? Wala, uh, doc, wala sa chat box. Okay. There are no questions in the chat box. Okay. So, um, I suppose uh, oh, I can see one, two, three, one, two, three, four. About five of you present here have experience with thyroid. I won't mention the names. So you have all experience with thyroid. You have, you want to ask questions? Doc, uh, ask ako ng question. Sina ta sa Perla? Okay, Perla, yeah. Okay. Yes, doctor, yes. Kasi last month, nagpunta ako sa dentist. Magpabunot sana ako ng ipin. Ayaw niya po akong bunutan kasi nga meron po akong, umiinom ako ng gamot sa thyroid. Magkukuma daw muna ako ng clearance sa akin endocrinologist. Bakit po ganun, doctor? Kukuha ako ng clearance pa. Kasi daw yung anesthesia, parang meron yata sa, ano, ayun, sabi niya sa anesthesia, parang, Meron daw siyang contents na nakakaano, nakakapalpitate ba yun? O ano? Anong anesthesia? Yung gamot ang bibigay sa'yo? O yung anesthesia, doktor, pag diba, pag binunutan ka, may tuturukan ka ng anesthesia. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Eh parang nakakaano daw sa thyroid daw yun. Nakaka-ovo. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Hindi pa okay. ako nakakuha ng clearance. Anong, paano mo... <laughs> How do you like me to answer your questions? Oh, <laughs> yung mga, yung mga dentists, uh, dentists are just like some other doctors who already who are too specialized. Hindi na sila ano, hindi sila holistic. Hindi na alam yung ibang sistema sa pasyente, na. No? Example, mm -hmm. probably isang specialist who uh, treat on the eyes, lahat ng kung magpapa-opera ka, gano'n, papaklearance ka lahat. Hindi, hindi nila maintindihan kung may meron heart disease o ano, gano'n, basta lahat may clearance. Yan ang tawag na clearance, di ba? So, isa okay. dentist, gano'n din. No? So, uh, yung ibang dentist, hindi naman kung nangangailangan, so they just go ahead because through experience, wala namang, wala namang masyadong side effect yung, yung levothyroxine mo with the anesthesia. Oh, yung nga po daw, yung ininom ko na gamot baka may ano sa anesthesia. Okay. So, yon So, it all depends on the dentist that you're seeing. As I said, we classify these people into maximalist or ritualistic. No? Yung iba, de kahon na lang. Basta pag meron kang gamot ni inom, no? kailangan meron kang clearance. Di ba? Okay. Parang, uh, parang doon sa COVID vaccination, bago ka magpa... Pag pa-vaccinate, pinapa-clearance ka muna. No? May medical certificate. No? Pero okay. usually hindi na kailangan yan. Eh. Diba? Ganun, no? okay. So it all depends on the doctors that you're seeing. Kung ano yung mindset nila. May mga doctors na hindi nagpapaano na. No? Okay. Ay natakot tuloy ako magpabunot kasi baka mamaya eh, pag tinuro ka na ako ng anesthesia, baka mamaya mag uh, ano ako. Kasi ayaw naman niya akong turo. Punungutan doktor eh pag wala akong clearance. Hindi uh, pumunta kasi isang doctor to get the clearance. 
Okay, I, I, I do a lot of these things also. That's why I said, yung mga hindi kailangan, pumunta rin sa akin, I cannot refuse them. So I give them the clearance, di ba? Parang ganun, mga madaming gumagawa ng thyroid test, hindi mga kailangan, pero nagpapagawa, pagkatapos pag may alarming results, pumunta sa akin, so mabasahin ko naman, di ba? Okay. So, so, kung di, if you cannot shift to another doc, dentist, then you might as well get the clearance kung kailangan-kailangan tunutin ka na ng ngipin mo, na? Okay. Okay, doctor. You can see me if you want. Walang problema, na? Ah, kayo na lang kay doctor. Opo, opo. Ano bang gagawin doctor pag kumuha ko ng clearance? Mayroon ba ang mga series of tests, ganon? Well, <laughs> 'di ba sabi ko sa iyo, history and physical examination is the, yung pinaka minimum. Wala na mga test eh. Ah, opo. Ah, wala. Sabi sa iyo, hindi kan ang dami tayong ano eh, 'di ba? Ang daming naniniwala sa mga test test pa. Yeah, sabi ko, Susan, sabi ko, marami tayong ano, maximalist patients. Maximalist patients. But, but you're influenced by the maximalist doctors. <laughs> okay po, doctor. Okay. Uh, okay, doctor. Doc, may, may questions, doc, sa chat box. Uh -uh. Na, uh, si Rochelle de la Cruz. Okay. Hi, doc. Question po. From my recent test, normal F3 and F4 Slightly elevated ang TSH. What are the symptoms to watch out for para po malaman ko whether I should undergo further test? Number one, okay. okay. Rush, are you taking medicine, Rochelle? Hindi po, Doc. Wala po akong inilaw. Wala, okay. So, slightly elevated, okay. Number one, when you say slightly elevated, I have to look at the figure at the number, no? Okay. And then, as I said, kung slightly elevated, pag ibang, pag eh, mga endocrinologists will tell you that you have hypothyroid, okay? Elevated kasi yung TSH, no? That's how the, uh, but uh, ako, baka kung wala ka namang symptoms, I can ask you to repeat it, no? para kampante ka na, no? Yung lobas ay normal, wala na. We're not talking about... Uh, kasi nangyari din sa akin yan in 2017, okay? When I was about to go abroad, my wife asked me to have a test, okay? So my my T4 was normal, my my TSH was elevated. So pinaulit ko after one week, normal. So so I don't have to take any test. Ha? So normal, normal pala, no? Okay? So if I just rely on one test, somebody might, if I, if I see an endocrinologist, sabi niya sa akin, hypothyroid ka, Ray, uminom ka na ng gamot. No? Okay. So, but ako, I did not take the medicine. So, but uh, if you don't want to take the test, you just, if you want to watch out for symptoms, no? you watch out for symptoms of hypothyroidism, but which is not very common, which, which usually mahirap makita rin yun. Eh, no? Okay? Kasi kung yung full-blown na hypothyroid, sinasabi, palaging nanghihina, palaging uh, drowsy, palaging uh, naantok, no? mabagal tumilos, no? bihirang-bihira naman yun eh. Because there are other causes for that, di ba? Maka stress, di ba? So if you want, pari-check mo na lang, no? Kung normal na yon, okay na yon. So you don't have to do anything extra, no? Okay. Okay. Another, another question, Doc, from Jacqueline Tong. What carries more weight, the T3 or T4? At the moment, uh, they said that the T4 is more, ano, more reliable than T3. Na? Okay. So, in, in mga kokonti lang instances na talagang uh, you put importance on the T3. Na? Okay. Kasi yung mga thyroid hormones, nakoconvert lahat sa T4. Eh. Yung, uh, yung mga nagsisirculate sa body. Na? Okay. So, we usually put more weight sa T4. Na? Okay. That's why when, okay. I, uh, when I order for test. No? I don't usually order to put the three tests anymore. No? Dalawa lang. FT4 TSH. No? Okay. If yes. I have to order. No? Okay. Para makatipid ng another, 
probably 600, 700 pesos yan. I don't know how much ngayon na. Maka 1,000 na ngayon. Na. Uh, doc, so a basic test, for example, for somebody who would like to to find out about the thyroid uh, situation of her body would be T4 and TSH. Okay na yan? Pwede na. Pwede na. Plus, uh, yung symptoms. Okay. Dagdag mo na yung symptoms. Kung, uh, kung wala naman symptoms, no? Okay. Symptoms of hyperthyroidism. No, or mm -hmm. hypothyroidism, kung normal ng T4, TSH, okay na yan. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any more? Wala na, Doc. No more. Okay. No more questions. Oh, I, I have another question. Sure, Jackie. Oh. Yeah. Uh, how do we, is there any way of preventing uh, problems with the thyroid? Like kami, uh, how, how do we try to prevent getting problems with thyroid? Is there any way at all? In general, in general, there is no way in general, huh? Okay, whether it's thyroid or other other organs, no. The only uh, disease that I know of offhand will be, will be mga infectious diseases like COVID. No? You can prevent it. You can try to prevent. But other, other than that, let's say yung mga cancer, autoimmune disease, yung mga, yung mga benign cysts, no? Ganon. there's really no way of preventing it. No? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So just hope and pray that you don't get <laughs> a bad a bad case of uh, a disease, na no? okay. So, okay. That's the reality of life. Sorry, wala <laughs> tayong magawa. Ako rin hindi ko mapredik anong tatama, ang anong natapos sa akin, na. No? Kano din sa thyroid, kasi sa thyroid hyperthyroidism, ano rin yun eh? Uh, autoimmune, kadalasan autoimmune disease, which is hard to prevent, na. No? Misan sabi nila stress induced. Bira. Pwede. Bira is pwede stress, no? Okay. Hypothyroid. Mm -hmm. Hypothyroid, baka yun. Baka kung kulang ang iodine mo, no? Okay. But usually, we have enough iodine in our diet, no? Okay. And mm -hmm. aging. Aging can also cause hypothyroid. Diba? Kung aging, no? Okay. Pero wala mm -hmm. kang nagawa dun sa aging, di ba? So, thyroid cancer, wala. We don't, except for, uh, uh, just avoid exposure to radiation, yung mga excessive radiation, di ba? Kasi mm -hmm. parang doon sa, doon sa, sa Japan, Hiroshima, di ba? Because of the nuclear explosion noon, daming may thyroid cancer because of the nuclear. Uh, okay. But other than, other than that, wala. I don't think, uh, no. just uh, hope and pray na lang. <laughs> It, it's not predis you're not predisposed it's not hereditary so, kumisan meron may mga diseases like uh, medullary carcinoma pwede no pero bihirang bihira saka it's uh, okay. number 1 it's also number 2 it's also bihira sa Pilipinas in medullary mas mas common sa, sa sa US no okay i see okay thank you i doc may I ask something again sure uh, uh, you were saying about uh, avoiding radiation. Uh, after my operation, thyroidectomy, uh, radiation yung, uh, yung inanok sa akin, uh, REI. <laughs> oh, okay. So, when lahat ng gamutan may risk. May benefit and the risk. Okay? So, we just balance it. No? Okay? So, kung uh, ang mas malaki ang benefit in terms of avoiding a recurrence, no? go for it. No? Okay. Yung risk of radiation is probably small lang yun. Kasi once, uh, ilang session lang yun. Two sessions, one session, pinainom ka, three days. Yeah. Okay. Then so, pinabalik ako ulit. Uh -uh, yun. Tapos, so, naman, tapos nung pinainom ako, five days ako sa hospital. Uh -uh. Okay. Kalkulado na yun. Kasi compared to yung sa nuclear, ano, yung palaging, let's say history-wise, yung mga, mga bata noon, mga centuries ago, nira-radiate yan with uh, tumetonsilitis, 
ang gamutan niyo, ni Rara J. No? So that's why there was a high incidence of thyroid cancer. Kasi rajate and rajate, no? Pero nowadays, we don't use that anymore. Okay? Okay. The other example is, sabi ko, yung nuclear bomb, di ba? Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. So, i-balance lang, benefit risk. No? Okay. Okay, any more? There are no more questions. Last call? Sure. Raise hands. Uh, Aida is raising your hands. Yes po, Doc. Ah, ano, anong question mo? Ah, Doc, inahanap ko yung link test ni, ano eh, ni Mrs. Olivia Taylor. Hindi ko makita eh. Okay. So, kasi po nun, uh, naka-300 microgram siya na Eltrox, ng thyroxine. Okay. Tapos, eh, gusto po niya talaga, iniintay ka yung mag-clinic para do gusto niya may kapa. Ay, may clinic na yung ako. May clinic na ako, ah, di ba? Okay po. Regular na? Hindi. <laughs> Once a week. O, yung mag-ano pa po? Yung mag-prepare po? Appointment. Appointment po? Okay po. Uh, August 2. August 2. My next clinic is August 2. Ah, okay po. Sige po. Pero pa akong one slot available. Last slot. Ah, okay. So, Sabihin ko na. po sa kanya. Uh, once a week lang ako nagkiklinik. Na? Eh, okay po. Okay. Sige, hintayin ko lang po pag nakapost. Yung schedule nyo po. Nakapost na. I'll give it to you, ma'am. Okay. Sige oh. po. Okay. Uh, Any more? Ano po? I think, uh, clar medyo lumabas lang ako doon eh. Hindi ko na, ano, kung natanong siya. Okay po. Uh, ang high po is mababa ang TSH. Ang hyper pala. Uh -huh. Paano po yung medication ng tyrosine? I-increase o i-decrease? Uh, oh, anong i-decrease? Uh -huh. Yung pong gamot, alimbawa, kung mag-50 microgram ka or the usual 100 microgram. Hindi. Uh, okay. Ganun yun, na Okay. Let me spend some time. Ito yung, nakita may drawing ko. Apa? Ito yung thyroid gland. So, it produces uh, T4, T3. Yan ang hormones, na? Okay, okay pa. So, so, ito maraming, kung nasa blood siya, maraming uh, uh, form yun, whether it's uh, combined, combined to protein or free. Na? May free kaya yung F nyo is free. T4, no? Okay. So, and then, yung sa brain natin, no, hospitary, nagpo-produce ng TSH, no? Thyroid stimulating hormones, no? So, which means, itong substance nito, ini-stimulate yung thyroid gland to produce this T3, T4, no? Okay. So, pag, uh, um, pag mat kung normal ito, normal ito, di ba? Kung normal okay. yan. Ah. Pero kung mataas ito, okay, kung mataas yung T4 mo, tendency, kasi may auto-regulatory mechanism. Eh. So, tendency, ipababa ito. Di ba? Para konti lang i-produce no? That's why when you have T4 na elevated and then TSH depressed, you call that hyperthyroidism. Mm -hmm. Di ba? Hyper. So that explains bakit baliktad, di ba? Bakit mababa ito, bakit mataas ito. No? Okay. Now, kung uh, kung, uh, kung yung T4 naman is mababa, no? Okay. Masyadong mababa. Ang tendency for the TSH, tataas. Di ba? Okay. Okay. I po. May, may, may konting auto-regulation uh, auto uh, auto siya. Di ba? So, T4 mm -hmm. mababa. So, tendency is this one to produce more TSH para to ask this thyroid. Okay, mag-overtime kayo. Gumawa pa kayo ng T4. Tulang pa eh. Di ba? Okay. So, ito yung high po. Okay. So ang gamutan nito magkaiba yung gamot, na? Okay. Ang gamot, ang gamot nito dito hyper you use you call it anti-thyroid, na? Anti-thyroid gland, na? Panlaban, na? Okay. 
Dito naman, replacement ito. Okay? So, replacement ito. Ay po, kulang eh. Di ba? So, uh -huh. magkadagdag ka. Replace. O kaya add. No? Ang gamitin mo, levothyroxine. Ay add. No? So, ang gamitin mo is mga levothyroxine ito. Levothyroxine. No? So, depending sa titration na yun, kung isang kulang, kung isang marami, hindi na dagdag-dagdag. No? Okay. Dito naman, iba yun. Ito yung mga tapasol, PTU. No? Iba yung gamot nito. No? PTU, tapasol. No? Okay. So I hope everybody understand now bakit uh, ang results sa thyroid function test kanina inaari ko. Mataas ito, mababa ito. That's for high for. Sa high po naman, mababa ito, mataas yung PSH mo. No? So uh, that's, that's the explanation for that uh, for those uh, values. No? Okay. So yung, yung sa pasyente mo, kamo, kung uh, kung uh, kulang ng kung kulang yung T4 niya, okay, or mataas ang TSH niya, dadagdagan nito, no? So it can be uh, 50, depende sa pasyente, no? 50, 175, pwede rin, no? 100, ganito, 150, depende, no? Okay. So the other use for this levothyroxine, aside from the uh, pangdagdag from replace, Kung isaan, sinusupress gamot used to suppress yung mga nodules. No? Suppress. Kasi pag, bina, pag binigay mo ng thyroid hormones, tataas yung T4 mo, di ba? Artificially. Mm -hmm. So pag, pag pinasa yung T4 mo, bababa ito. And then, baka yung nodule, yung nodule na ito, kumisaan limit siya. Kasi, kasi tumataas ito, di ba? TSH. Ay, ano, na? No? Okay. Pag bumaba ba, di ba? Nag, pag pag level tyroxine, hindi nagdag mo ito to high level, bababa ito. So, kumisan nagsistrink ito, piliit. No? That's why for that patient that you mentioned, I was I, I was giving him her 300, di ba? 300. So, titingnan natin kung uh, kung lumit na, pwede nang unti-unti bawa, bawasan. Okay. Okay po. Clear po. Thank you, Doc. Okay. Uh, one thing pa po, Doc. Ah. Uh. Why, ano po, um, times, parang nire-relate ang hormonal imbalance sa depression. Sa Depression. Sa depression. Nako, mar marami yung, maraming causes din ng depression, not only hormonal hmm. imbalance. But about hormonal imbalance? Well, how do you explain that? Hormonal, a lot of causes for depression. Ito nga siya, yung mga... Sabi mo po ba, pag may thyroid problem, minsan may mood swings? Yeah, meron din. Pero uh, kamisan, uh, kadalasan, whether that patient is uh, genetically predisposed. Yung iba kasi may mga inherent na personality na talagang depression. Uh -huh. may, may, may personality na depression, di ba? Okay. So, then the other, your hormonal imbalance can just parang reinforce lang. I-add lang doon siya doon. No? Okay. Okay. So, uh, Mahirap iwala yun dalawa. Na? Mahirap. Na? Okay. So you look first for the cause of the depression, whether it's uh, psychological or kung may dahil sa gamot. Dahil kung saan sa gamot can cause depression. Okay, a hormonal imbalance. Na? Kung kulang sa thyroid hormones. Ganon. Na? Ganon. Pero bihirang bihira yun. Get it? Okay pa. Thank you so much for the Eh, hindi po kanina po, yung may tanong sa magpapabunod ng ngipin, kailangan po medical clearance. Uh, sinabihan din po ako ng dentist ko, pero hindi po dahil sa thyroid problem, dahil po sa hypertension. Kasi may maintenance. Oh. Oh, oh. 
Oo, marami. Hindi naman po, hindi, uh-huh. hindi, hindi, hindi naman po pinonsider ng dentist. May maintenance ako sa thyroid. Um, mas, ano po sila doon sa, ano, sa maintenance sa hypertension. Uh-huh. Kaya, nihingi po ng uh, Ito, medical clearance. Talo na po sa senior. Uh, it all depends on the dentist. How, how brave they are, how how like how experienced they are, no? Mm-hmm. Okay. Parang ako, I don't order for a lot of preferences before operations because of my number one, I, I I know it's not really needed. Number two, because of my experience, wala naman nangyayari, di ba? Basta I mm-hmm. do pinaka minimum na examination na evaluate kita, examine kita, do uh, history, fiscal examinations. Kung sa palagay ko, wala namang uh, risk for the uh, risk for the uh, complications hindi nakita pinapa cardiac clearance clearance di ba kuno mm-hmm. so, but there are a lot of doctors who still go for clearance no okay okay po para sure sila oo uh, say pala maximalist siya <laughs> tawag na maximalist di ba oh maximalist pa uh, okay thank you for the okay there are no more questions dana let's call it a day So next time, next uh, Saturday, I might I might give a talk on uh, medical records, medical records. No? So I think that long sessions nito, past sessions, we're talking about diagnostic tests, di ba? So I suppose tama na yon, no? tama na yung exposure na yon. Now we will be talking about medical records, no? how to generate, how to uh, keep, and how to archive. No, importante kasi yung medical records ng mga tao. No? You have to keep your medical records. No? Parang Susan, yung medical records mo, I, so, I, I hope, completely yan. 1998 up to now. Hindi. <laughs> Tinapong ko na yung iba. <laughs> no, importante yung mga records ninyo. Ha? Patay ka. <laughs> keep it for life hanggang, hanggang kamatayan yung mga records niyan. Parang land title yan. <laughs> <laughs> Ako po daw nakatago yung parang ano nga, no remission. Yeah. Sige. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I want to talk about it because uh, number one, a lot of uh, you do not keep your records. Number two, doctors do not uh, get your records also. Di ba? Di ba? Sa, pagpunta kayo sa clinic, pagbiligay niyo yung pakita niyo isang lab results, naka, hindi mo, pag uwi mo, wala na isang records mo. <laughs> Tama? Okay, so I want to, I want to advise you to do it properly. Na? Medical okay, record. Doc. Very nice, very nice topic next time. Next week. Uh, <laughs> Something to look forward to. <laughs> okay. Ah, sige. Kung wala na, let's call it a day. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you po. Thank you, Doc. Okay. Bye-bye. God bless. Po. Bye-bye. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Doc. Thank you so much.